Now, why is this so dicey? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get it into the same shape that I saw over here. So see this half? What kind of part of the shape is it altering? Is it horizontal or vertical? It's vertical, right? So I think really this half, this constant belongs with the y, because that's the vertical thing, right? So I'm going to write this as 2y cos inverse 2x minus 1. Okay. Now what's so dicey about this, what I see students do year after year after year, is you've been so well trained to say, oh well, look, see that? Do you remember back from auxiliary angle? Right? Do you remember auxiliary angle way back last year? If that was like say pi on 6, you'd be like, oh I shift by pi on 6, yeah? And students will look at this and say, I will shift horizontally one unit. That's what it looks like, right? One unit, which way by the way? To the to the right, yeah, because it's that weird opposite thing. Except as you're about to see, you do not shift one unit to the right, and this approach will help us see why, okay? Let's look at this part. Firstly, what's the normal range of cos inverse? We're not sine inverse anymore, we're looking at cos inverse. Do you remember what the range is? It goes from zero to pi. I don't have y in there though, I've got two y in there, is that okay? So now to get the real range out of this, sorry, I should have written R for range. To get the real range out of this, what shall I divide by? That's easy. 0 divided by 2, y divided by 2, y divided by 2, pi divided by 2. Happy times, okay? But now have a look at the domain and how weird it is, okay? What's the regular domain of cos inverse? How far are you going? Negative 1 to 1, it's the same. But what I've got between negative 1 and 1 is this weird beast, okay? Now have a look at this. How do I get the, re the domain out of this? What am I, what's the first thing you'd like me to do? I'll add one to everything, everything. So that turns this into a zero, it turns this into two x, and it turns this into two. Does that make sense? But I don't have the domain just yet, do I? I still have to do one more step, which is divide by two. So that gives me this. Yes? Are you ready to draw it? One of the nice things about doing this first is you now automatically know which part of the graph you actually need to draw. So I don't need anything, oops, sorry, I don't need anything over here, in fact. This whole thing is in the first quadrant. Do you see the values? Okay. Uh, cos inverse, is that the one that is increasing or the one that's decreasing? It's decreasing, we just established that over here. So I'm going to start from pi on 2, here we go. I'm going to start up here, right, and then I'm going to curve downwards until I get to here, okay? So do you see what's just happened? This is from 0 to 1, and 0 to pi on 2, okay? It's not that you just move over one unit, okay? In fact, if you think about where the center of, center of motion is, if you like, where is that? Where is the center? It's at a half, it's halfway between. Why have you only moved half a unit and not a whole unit over? Because there's no, there's no half in here. What's going on? There actually is a half in there. We just haven't written it in such a case to show that. See this thing here? Can you see how we could write it to show that it really is a half? That two there, right, is really two outside of x minus a half. That's the real shift that's happened. It started at zero, the center of motion, and it moved over half a unit. I guess the way you could think about it is this one has been split into two. And if this was a three, it'd be split into three. You'd only move a third of a unit over, or whatever it might be, okay? So what I love about making sure you get the range and the domain right is that it's really hard to screw this up. And when I'm in an exam and I'm rushing, right, I will often get this backwards or I'll do this shift instead of that squeeze or whatever. I'll do it in the wrong order. But this is just algebra. You're getting much better at this, right? And then once you have that, you can't argue with it. You know exactly where it's going to go, okay? So when you get into 1C, and I know some of you are, are making great progress through it, but others of you are just starting it. When you encounter these questions like this, the question might not even ask for domain and range. But I'm going to encourage you to work that out first because it really helps you with the graph.